Hello and welcome to Freelance Speaker Plan website. This is the video tutorial basic number two and it is about parametric drawing. What are the differences compared to static drawing? What are the advantages? I will try to answer those questions through some examples. The first example is the trapeze geometry. So let's define some dimensions for this trapeze. The left side will receive x dimension. The base will be 2 times x, the right side will be 2 times x, and the height will be x divided by 2. So if x equals to 40, let's check the dimensions. The left side will be 40, the base will be 80, the right side will be 80 and the height will be 20. Let's implement this geometry using two different softwares, the FreeCAD and the Google SketchUp. So let's start with Google SketchUp. So I'm drawing the left side, the base, the right side, <coughs> and the roof. Let me check if the dimensions are right. So 40, 80, 80. One dimension is still missing, the 3D one, the height, and let's draw in it. 20, here we go. A very precise drawing. Let's do the same using FreeCAD, right? So, I will do the left side, the base, the right side, and the roof. Let me check the dimension and adjust it. Left. So, the base is two times left right and also the right side is two times left here we go very precise drawing 48 8 but one dimension is still missing that is the height and to do that in FreeCAD we need to use the pad function and the pad also needs to be related to the left side. So it's the left side divided by 2. Here we go. Let's check if this dimension is precise. Yes, 20. So now we have the same geometry implemented using two different softwares. And the result is the same. Let's change this geometry. So let's back here to the presentation and let's define now the X is equal to 20. So the base is equal to 40, the right side 40 and the height 10. Let's implement this change using Google SketchUp. So let's start again with the left side. To do that change, we need to select this edge and move in it 20. Here we go. Now, the right side, we need to move 40. Okay. To move the base, we need to select all the edges in the right side and move it 40. We are almost there. There are still one dimension that needs to be adjusted and it is the height. Here we go. Now the drawing is updated. Let's do the same using FreeCAD. So I'm going here. I'm changing the left side from 40 to 20. Here we go. Everything is already updated with just one single command. 
let's check if this dimension is right. Yes. So compared to the previous one. So everything was changed automatically. And this is where the parametric drawings shine. It's when you need to change the drawing, not when you are creating the drawing. It makes it very easy and simple and fast to change the drawing. So now let's move to another example. Let's talk about horn. So here is a 2D representation of a parabolic horn. We have the throat area, we have the mouth area, and we have a length. How can we implement that in a kind of fold style? So we have a loudspeaker, we have a 9 degree fold, how can we guarantee that this shape is implemented here? So to do that, unfortunately, I don't know the name. Who was the guy that implemented and created the centerline methodology? But let's check this methodology. So basically, he creates some lines with some special rules that I'm not going here into detail. But those lines will help you to predict the horn length. And here you can see I'm drawing additional lines to implement the center line method. But as you can see, the sketch is still not fully constrained because the center line method standalone it's not enough to generate a good folded horn so this leads to another methodology that our colleagues developed in the last years that is the unfolded version as we can see here the unfolded horn. So if I'm changing the horn, we can see here we are making the mouth of the horn bigger because I create a kind of link between these auxiliary lines defined by the center line methodology and the unfolded horn. But still, as you can see, the drawing is not fully constrained because I can still modify it and it's not create a very good shape of the horn. So to do that, there is just one constraint that's still missing. So let's create a straight line between the throat and the mouth of the horn because each segment of the horn rasp must be one single horn. And if we do that, and we make this point and this line touch each other, here we go. Now the sketch is fully constrained, and we have one percentage to guarantee that this folded horn and this unfolded horn are equals and they can be simulated using horn rasp. So we can say that this represents one single horn. I also implement this situation using a slightly different methodology. As we can see here, I also have the unfolded version but that auxiliary line here does not exist. And even if you delete the unfolded horn, my sketch is still fully constrained. Because I'm using a kind of hybrid methodology. I still use in the center line, but I also create some horn slices, three horn slices that I use to define the proper size of this fold. So this is to show you that if you are planning 
to design a loudspeaker, you will need to have a CAD tool because it's through the CAD you are able to fold in the horn and to predict the shape and go to the horn rasp with a very good and very accurate dimensions for the horn. And let's also make some changes here once it is implemented by parametric drawing and everything will adjust automatically. So currently the throat of the horn is 20. Let's see what happens if I change from 20 to 30. Here we go. The mouth area was also changed. The length was changed too. So let me back here so you can see. Here we have basically 110 and here we have 45. Let's back to 20. So 121 and 36. Let's just change the flare of this horn. So the flare is basically it has a constant angle that is 80 degree. Let's change this angle and see what will happen. So 90 degree. Let's increase it to 15 degree. So while we are increasing the flare, the mouth is increasing the area, but the length is being reduced. Let's make now a big change. Let's create a constant cross-sectional area. Let's put this angle equals to zero. Now it's just a constant cross-sectional area. As we can see here, the mouth and the throat and the mouth has the same value. And the length is 131. So I think it's very easy to understand why we need parametric drawings because there are some dimensions that we cannot define it with a very simple drawings. They are very complicated. We need a lot of different constraints in order to be able to define those values in a good way, in an accurate way, and so the model you have in the Ron RASP will be a good one. So the predictions the simulation will give you, you can trust it because the input values you are giving to the horn rasp are good. If you provide the horn rasp a bad values, they will give you a bad prediction. So the quality of the simulation is based on the quality of the input. And a good input for a loudspeakers that depends from dimensions, there is no better way than use CAD softwares to achieve those accurate level. So that's it. I hope you are convinced that the CAD drawings is the best way to go. Thank you a lot.